Welcome to Refashion Your Life. I'm Megan Pyra. And I'm Shalise Hadley. Are you ready? Here we go. You've been asking, you've been wanting, you've been pleading, you've been emailing. We are going to talk about Shalise's transformation. <laughs> we are going to start talking about a little bit about more of what we put on our bodies, how we treat our bodies, exercise. We're going from the inside to the outside. So get ready. Here we go. Okay. Ever since we aired my 80 pound purpose, we have had so many people call call me or text me or write me, or message me and say, oh, I wanna see a before picture. Well, that has been very hard for me because I am not that person anymore. So I really put in a lot of thought and I went through a thousand ugly pictures and I have come up with one that I'm willing to share, but not right now, um, it may be in a minute, <laughs> but what I did want to talk about was kind of how everybody said, how have you got this? Um, or when did you get your fire lit in you? And how did you get that inside you? And everybody's like, well, what's the secret? Well, there is a secret and I have it and I will share you the secret to my success. So, but first of all, here's my story. This is how I got the fire lit inside me. I had wanted to have a change in my life. I knew that, you know, I wasn't the person that I wanted to be. I knew I needed to lose weight. I know that I needed to treat myself better, but I just hadn't done it. It was always this thing, I want, I want, I want, I want. Well, I just sat and wanted it long enough that I think that want to turn into a desire. But then I needed that trigger, and this is what happened to me. So it was Christmas time, and my dear sweet husband said, hey, can I have $300 for your Christmas present? I'm like, yes! because I wanted this beautiful framed picture of Christ and I just thought, yep, it's about $300, that's what I'm getting. So here's Christmas morning and we all go out and everybody's so happy and everybody opens up all their gifts and I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's the end and where's my big present? And so my husband says, close your eyes and I am like, oh, and I'm sitting there and he's like, okay, open your eyes. And so I did. And standing there before me is my dear sweet husband and all of my children, so excited, and they're all standing next to a bike. A bike! A bike! He bought me a bike. He didn't buy me a picture, he bought me a bike. And of course, it's Christmas time. So it's Christmas morning, I can't have a fit. My kids have to be grateful for what they got. I have to be grateful for what I got. So I'm looking at this going, a bike, okay. And he's all excited because he's like, you can take the kids in the bike trailer. Um, I'm like, yeah, because we had a bike trailer for his bike. I just didn't ride a bike for myself. And he said, you know, oh, I'm so excited. The kids were excited and everyone was excited. Except inside, I was like, I don't need a bike. I'm okay. I don't want to ride a bike. Anyways, he took a picture of me, half smiley, <laughs> by that bike. That was not the change inside me. The change came about 30 days later when back in the olden days, <laughs> not too many years ago, when you went and could still develop your film. And I had got, come back from Walmart and I was walking in the door and I was exactly in this spot. And I wanna make this my point. I was in this spot in my house. And I had walked in and I was flipping through those pictures and I came to that picture of me in that um, um, standing next to that bike. And I froze right here with those pictures in my hand. And I stopped and I looked at myself and it really, I looked at the size that I was. I looked at, um, you know, my family all around me and they were all so happy and smiling, but there was me. And the thing that I noticed was my eyes. In my eyes, I looked dead. I didn't recognize that person. And I said, I am not that person. Who is this person? And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my heavens, what, did, what happened to me? And that was when it happened. And what I don't even know how to explain it, other than the fact somebody reached inside me, myself, and hit play. Do, do, do. And all of a sudden, I felt like rocky on the inside. didn't look like that on the outside. Okay, so my point to telling you that this was the exact spot I was when I had that final spark that lit the fire inside me was the fact that 
I wasn't at a motivational seminar. I wasn't at some special place. It was just, like I said, that final thing that just did it for me. And it was just in this spot. So it's kind of fun for me because when I walk into my house sometimes, I'm thinking, oh, I'll have that thought every once in a while that this was the spot that it all started. Something so simple. So, you know, don't look for some magical place you have to be. Just if, if you want it, you desire it enough, it'll happen. Now, for my secret. I told you there was a secret. There is a secret. And so many people are like, what is it? How did you do it? Well, this is the secret. It's the secret in everything that we will talk about from here on out. From fitness to food. When I say fitness, I meant, you know, movement. Things you're going to incorporate in your life that you're going to add. You know, food, just the way that you think about yourself. This is the key. This is the secret. Are you ready? Ready, set, here it is. Consistency, okay? I'm flipping this over. Consistency, consistency, consistency. It's a magic word. If you are consistent, you will get results. Didn't you just love the bike story? I mean, I just <laughs> loved it. So relatable. Okay, so now that you had your former self or that person that you wanted to become, like she said, reach inside you and push play. Yes. And anyone else at home that's kind of feeling that same fire, uh -huh. what do we do now? Okay. Okay, so what happened to me after that fire was lit inside me, I had to face what was going on inside me. I had to face the thoughts that I was having about you know, this was just how life was, this is just how it's going to be for me, um, I'll get there one day because I know I can and I don't really have control of this right now because my life is so busy, I'm a new, you know, mom and I'm wife and I'm all of these things. So what I did was the thing that honestly helped me the most, it was like my foundation. Besides having that drive inside me, it was journaling and this is my journal, my actual journal. And what I did was found things that inspired me that put, helped change my mindset. And I will share a few personal ones with you of things that I was like, I identified with and I realized. So, there are one of these sayings in here, I'm just going to show you really quick. One says, you control your body. I was like, yeah, that's true. I do have control of my body, but that seemed overwhelming. But I still put it in, in there. Um, a thing that I loved, I was like, okay, I know food goes along with this, wanting to exercise and take care of myself, but a thing that um, I, a saying that I read was, what you eat in private, you wear in public. So I know this is coming down a little bit more somber, but this was kind of where I went. Um, it never gets easier, you just get better. Because everybody says, well, it just seems so easy for you now. No, I just got better at it as I strived to do, increase my knowledge and increase, I don't know, my drive inside me. I loved this one. This is like, totally matches my Rocky thing. It says, it's hard to beat a person that never gives up. I knew that I was not a person that was going to give up, no matter how hard things got. And I had almost given up, obviously, by the way that I looked on the outside. Um, another thing that I loved was, what's my other one that I just so loved? Oh, the saying, it will hurt. It will take time. It will require dedication. It will require willpower. You will need to make healthy decisions. It requires sacrifice. You will need to push your body to its max. There will be temptation, but I promise you, when you reach your goal, it's worth it. So, journaling for me is what kept my fire going inside. I loved the fact that I could pull little things that motivated me. You know, I'm not a big journaler to sit down and write my grand thoughts, but I love pulling in pictures. Pictures speak a thousand words. I love pulling sayings that, sayings that just raised my vibration and kept me going and things I could identify with. And I didn't care if anybody else didn't get it. It was my private journal. And that was very important for me. So after that, I had to decide to do something. And I chose to do one thing. And that one thing was not food. It was get up and move, get up and go. So I got on that bike <laughs> and I am embarrassed to say I could bear two blocks that very first time I got on that, box, or on that bike. And this is why, because I looked like this. And for me, 
That is not how I felt. I felt like this inside. This is the me that I am now, that I felt, and it was just dying, but waiting to bust out and show the world that I had more inside of me than just the things that I let paint it and worry and weigh me down was now I was shedding that and I was becoming this new person. So get up and choose that one thing. Just do one thing. It can be food for you, but for me, it was getting on that bike. So I mastered riding that bike. And I had a lot of fun doing it and I had a lot of fun around the neighborhood until I was going across town. And I was doing it just for a fun outing, not to get on my workout clothes. I'm like, hey, we're going to the park. Well, I'm going to pull you in the bike trailer. It evolved to things that I never even imagined. And so get up and do something. So the last thing that we're going to talk about today is excuses. You can come up with a million, I'm sure. And I can still come up with a million for, you know, things that I don't want to do. But the fact of the matter is you are important. Sacrifice is so worth it you know what it became that you know I fit it in my day I could with my kids and I made it part of our life and I made fitness part of their life you know just being more active I call it fitness now but then it was just being more active and enjoying life a little bit more and then it was like you know what we our life evolved things happened and I had to make sacrifice with my sleep and it became that I got up, I get up every morning at 4 30 in the morning and people are like how do you do that well, no more excuses. I can do that. And I make sure that I get enough sleep and I make sure that, you know, everything is taken care of in the day before I go to bed so I can get up, do that, come home before my kids are out of bed from the, you know, from the gym. I'm home, they're up, breakfast, and it hasn't cut into anything except I sacrifice a little bit of my sleep, but my body doesn't need that sleep anymore now. So you can do it too. These things, consistency, movement, journaling, and just get rid of your excuses. All these things will help you become that better you. So what is your one thing that you want to choose to do? You don't have to do everything at once. If you just want to pick that one thing, just it's just a place to start, to start feeling better about who you are. So grab a journal, mm -hmm. and if those excuses yeah. start coming in, write them all down and cross Punch them out. <laughs> They are not going to be applicable to you once you reach in and push that play button and want to start to make that change. It's got, you've got to want it. You've got to desire that. And everything will start happening. And you're going to get opposition. For yes. sure. Oh, yes. For sure. But it's, Temptation. It's Shalisa's <laughs> secret. Consistency. <laughs> so keep going. Keep, keep doing it. And if you are consistent, you are going to see results and you're going to be happy.